What is going on everybody, it's your boy Nathan Skills, and today we had a lot of really big news come out of the state of the game and in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down all the important parts, try to summarize in between their talking points and hopefully you guys get enough information out of this video that you don't have to go back and watch the full state of the game. So let's break down what they were talking about. So the first thing they were talking about is title update 5. Yes, we have a new title update coming out. The PTS will start Monday. But Hamish dives into it a little bit more, so let's listen to what he had to say. It's pertinent to have you here today because the PTS, or TU5's PTS, will be starting on Monday. So, yes. there you go. Uh, it is PC only, um, as all of our other PTSs have been. Um, and there will be a different approach to the PTS testing. We'll unlock and lock content from episode one. Um, according to a set schedule, and I don't have that schedule for you right now, but we will share that soon, probably on social. Um, because we, we're doing this because we want to test specific content uh, and direct people towards those activities so we can get the, the best feedback on that. The next thing they get into is blueprints. So if you guys are blueprint hunting and you guys don't get those final blueprints, you will be able to get them from level three control points. So that's coming back to that. And also they get into exotics dropping from heroic bosses. So let's listen to everything Hamish had to say on that. Blueprints are shared over projects and control points. So alert level three and four and Anaya uh, who refreshes every week. Um, this means that you can get any of the blueprints from any of these sources, meaning if you miss something, you can grind control points. That's cool news for people who are still blueprint hunting. Heroic bosses will drop exotics. Okay, this was news to both, uh, I, th I think, both of us. Um, no, I knew about that one. Okay, there's yeah. some other exotic stuff that you didn't know about. Yes, Okay. or so, one thing in particular. All right, yeah. the ones that come from crafting quests, I'm thinking Nemesis, mm -hmm. um, you, you have to have gotten to the points where you own the blueprint for them to drop from heroic bosses. Ones that come from world drops, you have to have gotten them once for them to drop again. Roll at max, everything, in accordance to their gear score. No, no downgrading damage when upgrading gear score. So if you have a 500 nemesis, you have the same 500 nemesis as everyone else. And I think to sort of go back to the previous point is, so if you're taking a 490 exotic, you still haven't quite got it up to 500 yet, the minute you bring it up to 500, it's going to be a max roll. So did you guys hear that? They are changing exotics in the way they work. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love the whole change to it. So now an exotic is going to have the same exotic for every single person. It's going to be max rolled. No worrying about having to get the max roll on it. Everybody will have a max roll if they earn that exotic. Not only that, exotics now will drop in open world bosses as long as you've already gotten the bosses. So if you've gotten the blueprint ones like the Nemesis, well, you have a chance of it dropping again from heroic bosses. And weapons that drop from open world bosses, as long as you've gotten that exotic, it will have a chance of dropping from those heroic bosses. So now you have a reason to actually grind heroic missions. The next thing they talk about is the Gunrunner will now sell level 500 gear. The crafting table will be able to upgrade to level 500. You will be able to craft 500 level weapons and gear. And not only that, you will be able to recalibrate those weapons that you craft. So let's take a listen. There are some other bits of news. Cassie, who I think fair criticism hasn't necessarily had the best stock of stuff, uh, will now sell 500 stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. with the stock refresh weekly. She has normal gear and guns as well as some exotics and named items. So named items being the high ends with names, the shield splinter and that sort of thing. So you can buy it from there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, crafting at 500, the bench upgrade will be available. It requires a 490 gun, a 490 gear piece and material to make. After that, you can make gear score 500 items. Mm, crafting. Recal works from and to crafted gear. Let's go to you five. Hog, man. Flashlight attachments for pistols coming into yeah. TU5. That is super cool. I uh, this is this is what Frederick wrote to me. Flashlight attachments for pistols can be found ellipsis somewhere. Ellipsis. Very dramatic. Um, maybe in some dark corners. Yes. I actually <laughs> maybe who knows. Um, I have no idea. I literally just saw this today. Only some some rooms I've entered that were pitch black and mm -hmm. that I could have you know I would love to have shown a light into. So we now have flashlights on our pistols for those dark areas in the Division 2. And if you guys play any of the Division 2 content, you know we can get pretty dark pretty quick. The next thing they talk about are three new weapons we're getting in the Division 2 in 
title update five. So let's take a look at this. Can we have a look at the new weapons, which is that one? So there's a carbine seven assault rifle and what is called the stoner LMG, both with new talents apparently. I don't have those talents, I haven't seen them, but those are the models for the new weapons. They're, they're pretty good, they're pretty good talents. I can't think of them. I know that for the LMG in particular, it's like, um, they're appropriate. They're appro one. Okay. Can we take a look at those, the other new image? That one. Damn, son. That's the new danger noodle gun. The danger noodle. I like it. Uh, I wish it was called that. It's called the Diamondback. Yes. Uh, which Thank is you. a rifle with the, the lever action. Mm -hmm. If you, if you didn't catch it, rifle. can we actually just go back to that image? So you see there that that lever action down there, the uh, by the by the tail of the snake. That, what about those uh, watchdogs looking gloves? The BTSU gloves. Mm. What a great way to segue into our next topic of skills. Um, okay. So the BTSU gloves are a pair of exotic gloves that. Um, they're quite complicated, so I'm going to do my best to summarize. Okay. But basically what they're going to do is make a hybrid skill build. And by hybrid, I don't mean weapon damage and skills. I mean a skill build that's using perhaps an offensive skill with a crowd control skill. And by alternating between the two of them, you're going to unlock and proc some pretty crazy effects. Uh, so we're looking at, yeah, boosting your your damage output, boosting the damage of the skills, uh, essentially when you throw a skill platform. Mm -hmm. So let's say you've got the remote pulse, which is a less than popular skill platform um, or skill variant of the pulse. Mm -hmm. When you throw it, you're almost gonna, it's now essentially gonna almost behave like a little small grenade because where it lands is gonna create an explosion based off of a um, status effect. So it could be okay. fire, could be shock, could be bleeding. Uh, and that's going to affect targets. And then when things are affected, you start rolling more buffs. And it's cool. It's cool. So, but you, you won't experience this type of skill usage outside of using these gloves. That particular behavior of throwing a remote pulse and having it detonate like yeah, a little yeah. grenade, that's because of the exotic gloves. So it's pretty cool to see that we're about to get a new exotic in the Division 2. Some gloves that are skill build focused. So not damage based focus, but skill build focus. You build around those gloves you could have yourself a really nice build it's going to be cool to see what those gloves can actually do once they come out and what builds everybody decides to do okay how do we bring skills close to that high water mark mm -hmm. as much as possible um so not bringing the weapons down but bringing so uh, without nerfing up. weapons in any way whatsoever how do we get a 100 percent dedicated skill build up to that kind of power delta right um and it was it was it was a process, and it was it was a fun process because it really allowed us to kind of take a, I guess like a holistic look at skills, their behavior, how they currently exist, how we would want them to exist, um, and then yeah, really kind of like essentially establishing identities and profiles for skills, uh, with based off of our intentions, and then going from a sort of top down approach initially to figure out like, okay, how do we achieve that? So maybe, well, to make a long story short, it meant buffing skill mods, making them do go from doing a, let's say you have 3000 skill power, for mm -hmm. instance, on live in TU4 right now. You could buff your turret. Uh, let me check my cheat sheet, which is a document made for ants. Um, <laughs> so the old turret, uh, a skill mod that buffs the damage on a turret, for instance, mm -hmm could go up to about 25 to 30%. That's how much you can increase the base turret damage by. Um, now you can, now that same mod, if you've got 3000 skill power, will increase its damage by up to 150%. So that's a large increase, which- It's a big difference. Sounds pretty crazy, but that's what we had to do to shrink the power delta between weapon damage and skill platform damage. So to see them focusing on skill builds is something that I was waiting for them to do. Um, of course, I love using DPS and DPS builds with your rifle, with your AR, with your SMG, LMG is always going to be my favorite. But I love seeing skill builds out there because if you could put a really good skill build with a good DPS build, it just works really good together. And I really can't wait to get my hands on the PTS to kind of test out those new skill builds. There, there's more to skills though than just damage. So we also looked at cooldowns and how effective the current cooldown is. And it was very, very easy to achieve 
um, the 90% cap and get your skills down to 10 seconds. The, the, this is a problematic situation. Um, so what we've done is we've essentially changed cooldown reduction to skill haste, okay. which is something that goes way above 100%. Um, and is a much healthier system for sort of the overall integrity of the game uh, in the short and long term. Um, but it does mean that right now when people log into the PTS, for instance, they will notice that the skill cooldowns are higher than they would have been otherwise with the same gear that you have. Yeah. However, because people don't use any skill power. For sure, for sure, or cooldown reduction sure. because they're just not running skills. Yeah. Um, however, we've done a few things to uh, balance this overall. So all um, cooldown reduction that's currently on your gear right now is going to be renamed and rebranded to skill haste. We're also increasing the value. So cooldown reduction becomes skill haste, and we've increased the value on your gear. We buffed your your new your now skill haste by thirty three percent. So it's, it's significant, it's significant. And this gets, we can, I guess, segue from this into what's really interesting about the new cooldown reduction system in particular, mm -hmm. and skill power and how things scale. So now, skill haste really does scale with your skill power. So if you have a lot of skill power, like let's say 2,000 or more, and you have a lot of cooldown on your gear, sorry, skill haste on your mm -hmm. gear, which I have a build internally uh, with just my gear and talents. I can I have 135 skill haste, 135% skill haste. Mm -hmm. And now with 3,000 skill power, you can then plug in cooldown reduction mods, which previously existed. But now instead of reducing cooldowns by 40 or 50%, some of them reduce cooldowns by up to 200%. Do the mods say skill haste or cooldown reduction? Skill haste. Cool. Just so I'm probably right. going to make a dog's breakfast okay. of, <laughs> of cooldown reduction and skill haste because I'm still even myself. But after TU5, cooldown reduction does not exist at all. No. It is all skill haste. It will n forever be known as skill haste. Gotcha. Cooldown right. reduction is dead, long live cooldown reduction. So skill haste is going to be a really big part of skill builds, and I can't wait to see how strong and how powerful these skill builds get with skill haste. In the next couple videos, they're gonna show you the big difference in damage between title update four and title update five skills. So let's take a look. Let's look at the first comparison video, which I think, what are we what are we showing here, Seeker Mine? This, this is the new Seeker Mine. Well, there's the before and after. Cool, we'll actually loop this because I think it's important to watch a few times. So what you can see here is uh, Bruce doing some testing in the gyms is uh, what we do on the development yeah, side. Yeah. Uh, you see time to kill on the left, the TTK, and the uh, player's time to be killed. Um, obviously, that's not what we're testing here. Yeah, uh, ignore TTK here. I mean, like, like yeah, could have shot that guy in the head with his little sliver of health a lot sooner. Yeah. Um, but you can see that the old Seeker Mind is taking off roughly, if I'm not mistaken... Um, it takes about two, double the time. Well, it's, it's about two... It was taking two armor bars off of that named elite mm -hmm. enemy. The new one is bringing it right down to a sliver of health. And this That's a big is, change. This is, I, I want to stress the fact that this is without me or my character wearing any gear that further boosts explosive damage. I don't even think I was a demolitionist at the moment. Okay. So the, you can do quite a lot of damage with explosive skills. Okay. So this one really kind of, I think, encapsulates the difference because he, I, I think it was like, again, a, a couple of hours off on before. Now he's being essentially one shot. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's the first bomb that actually kills him. Mm. The, the bombardier drone is dropping two bombs. So it's a lot of damage. That's a lot. And, uh, oh yeah, this is cool. So yeah, the deploy time. Uh, yeah, so this one gives you definitely, like, look at the time to kill. <laughs> four, four seconds to 0.9. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a big change. It's significant. It's significant. Very cool. Uh, how about the... What's the next one? So the intention, what I was trying to do here, was show you how you can... Because the, the thing that we're, we haven't really talked about yet is how skills... It's not... You don't just have one skill. You've got two, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of synergy and there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, and one thing that you can do in particular, and this goes back to how we wanted to, or how we approached the rebalance, is 
from a top-down perspective of what kind of builds do we want to encourage and what kind of builds uh, do we do we want the players to be able to do mm -hmm. uh, based off of different kind of skill combinations. Um, and, you know, one option in particular is to be very focused on doing single target damage with skill platforms. Mm -hmm. And a good way to do that is with the assault turret and the striker drone. They're actually, we haven't shown one video. What's the last one that we have? This comparison. Oh, I love this. The shield is back. The time to be killed. So, uh, yeah. there you go. Time Keeps on going. Yeah, there you go. Time to be killed is what? Yeah, I, we actually had to add a frame hold because this, <laughs> this is going to be... Uh, this goes on and on. It's going to take is... a little while here. Yeah. I like it. Very cool. Um, yeah, like I said, I can't wait to see what build people go with. And again, I would stress, make sure you get yourself on the PPS to test these things out. Uh, so there's a lot of changes to skill builds, and it's going to be crazy to see what builds people actually start running, not only in PvE, but in PvP, with skill builds becoming a thing in Title Update 5. Let me know what you guys think about all these changes. Hopefully we get more information next week. Leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful. As always, if you're new to my channel, first time watching video, hit the subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on so when I release a video, you guys get notified. As always, until the next video, nothing but skills out.